Okay, so uh, thank you for introduction. Uh, I'm Fumio Shoji, and I'm the uh, Division Director of Operations and Computer Technology Division, RCCS Weekend. So today I will talk about the new services and operation of Fugaku. And, but the uh, part of uh, my talk uh, has already been uh, mentioned by uh, Matsuoka-san and Isikyo-san. So, uh, so uh, this slide is frequently used, and this uh, shows the origin of the name of Fugaku. So as you know, uh, Fugaku is the another name of Mount Fuji, and the Mount Fuji represents the idea of supercomputing within. So that is, so high peak um, corresponds to extremely large computing capability, and the broad base symbolize uh, broad applications and user area. So in this talk, uh, I'd like to discuss how can we achieve as a broad base. Okay, so, uh, so let me change pointer, okay. So uh, to achieve the broad base, uh, I think there are two important keys. Why the service improvements for new users? And uh, the other one is uh, service improve, uh, sorry, uh, the other is table and the efficient services. So here is our approach for new years, new users. Uh, first, we try to develop and provide new and various computing services with commercial service providers. And the uh, involving crowd technologies into our services will help us to improve usability. And uh, open source software de uh, deployment is also important. And the, for uh, stability and efficiency, uh, I will introduce some operation policy to raise users' awareness for energy consumption and the efficient usage. Okay, so uh, of course, uh, Fugaku is used by, uh, so I will talk about the Fugaku Cloud Platform. So uh, Fugaku is used by uh, many traditional users who have many experience and have know-how for large-scale simulations. So we believe many remarkable outcome will be provided by their I provide them the activity, uh, just like in uh, the K computer case. But on the other hand, so to achieve the broad base, uh, we have to approach potential users as well. So for instance, uh, data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, scientists, and so on. Uh, but actually this is not so easy. So we decide to collaborate with commercial service providers who have skills and experience to develop and provide various computing services. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, Fuga Cloud Platform is the project name. And so this is logo. And the, we expect uh, that new computing services uh, will be developed and provided by uh, this uh, activity. Okay, so, so this slide shows the uh, schedule of the project. So the project has already started uh, since April last year with uh, nine companies and organizations. So recently uh, we uh, have two more companies and they joined these activities. And uh, in this collaboration, we aim to develop new uh, computing services and test on Fugaku. And we expect uh, many of them will be launched as an official service on Fugaku. So in last year, uh, Fugaku was still in construction and tuning uh, and early access phase. So we uh, developed API and new services and test a part of them. So I'll mention the API writer. 
So we expect uh, some of services will be able to move to trial phase and then uh, hope to be an official services on FDAC in uh, next year. Okay, so uh, you can see the our collaboration partners. So Altair Engineering, Focus and Binance, Extreme D, Nimbix, Exa Corporation, HPC Solutions and Algo Graphics, and HPC Systems. So as I said, recently we have two more companies, Fujitsu and Rescale. And so you can see a project detail in this URL. So um, I'd like to discuss about involving cloud technologies into our services. So as you know, recently, uh, even for HPC domain, public cloud is one of the most popular computing resources. So public cloud provides many high value added services and they are improving in very short time. So a lot of people is used to running their workload on the cloud. For them, cloud services have already been indispensable. If so, it is important to import such a technologies into our services to expand users and application area. So first, uh, we provide uh, an access API based on NUT 2.0, so which is developed by the NASC. Uh, NASC is the uh, one of the major HPC center in US. And the, so of course we uh, user can access to Fugaku by traditional SSH. And the, this API will uh, provide the other and flexible access path to Fugaku for users. And it will help uh, <clears throat> service providers to develop software services on Fugaku as well. So we also expect that the API will be a standard to um, access API for many HPC systems in many HPC centers. So a network connection between public cloud services is also important. So we have already uh, established a direct connection network between Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, OCI, by Cloud Connection Services uh, by National Institute for Informatics. So we also provide an on-premise S3 compatible object storage and try to construct Kubernetes environment of Gaku. Okay, so let me discuss about open source uh, software on Fugaku. So as <clears throat> K-Computer users know, uh, due to special uh, in, in instruction set architecture uh, of K-Computer, there were no software ecosystem. So, <clears throat> uh, so um, everybody faced uh, many compilation fails for many open source software. So on the other hand, so for Fugaku, uh, there, are may, uh, there are some activity for open source software on ARM um, ISA. For instance, uh, ARM HPC user group, which is organized by ARM, and the Rinaro, who is a contributor to port and tune uh, open source software for ARM architectures. And the, we adopt uh, Spark as a software package manager on Fugaku. And the SPAC is an official software package manager of the Exascale computing project. The, as you know, many HPC centers in US are involved in Exascale computing project. So it helped us not only to deploy and manage open source software supported by SPAC on Fugaku, uh, but also to distribute uh, applications and tools uh, we developed. So as Masoko Sensei mentioned, we also tried to port and tune a deep running framework on Fugak by uh, DL4 Fugak project. Okay, so let me briefly mention about the our contribution for Spark activity. So, so um, Spark uh, organized software deployment by recipe. 
So currently there are more than 50,000 recipe and they are shared as an official recipe. So information about the whether the compilation success or failed with the recipe would be useful for many ARM users. So we have started to share the information in this URL. So one remarkable point is that compilation success ratio for A64FX uh, is compatible uh, to that of the X86. So, so this and this. And the, so, so we plan to add information about the uh, executability and the performance and so on to this web page. So as I mentioned, I, uh, we also try to make recipe for uh, software we developed. So um, let me move to the next, next topic. Uh, I'd like to discuss here about the stability and efficiency. So this table shows a uh, comparison K computer with full system and the point is the uh, peak uh, power consumption. So, so roughly speaking, it uh, is more than double. And of course, it will be lower in ordinary operation mode. But uh, this suggests us uh, we have to pay attention for efficiency for, to reduce energy consumption. So uh, one of the key to achieve energy efficient operation is power knob. And the FUGAC has many power knob functions uh, which help to reduce power consumption. So this table uh, shows the functions and its options. For, it, uh, for instance, so <clears throat> we can choose number of active floating point units and its option is one or two or two. Okay, so we also can control number of active integer units, memory bandwidth, decode, issue rate, frequency, and retention. And so a retention means a low power mode for unused core and or node. So this is the um, typical use case of these functions. So before job uh, executions, uh, administrator apply node retention for unused node. So then uh, when job is allocated uh, to node, administrator release retention mode and user may use uh, power node. And then when job executions, um, user may control power knob. And after job execution, the node should be returned to the default power knob settings by administrator. Mm -hmm. So finally, um, <clears throat> if there is no job to be allocated, uh, the node will be uh, the retention by administrator. Okay. So, but the, in many cases, uh, there, uh, there is a trade-off between the energy efficiency and the computing performance. So important point is how can we motivate users for energy efficiency? So we introduce a new resource allocation rules as follows. So first uh, allocate energy, uh, which is corresponds to watt hour in addition to node hour. So first step, uh, we plan to increase the user's awareness uh, for energy efficiency by informing consumed energy by uh, their jobs. And second step, um, when allocated energy is exhausted, and the job scheduling policy will be lowered. So, <clears throat> Yeah, we understand uh, there is an issue to keep fairness among project because the uh, power consumption profile depends on application code. So we try to uh, develop uh, a convincing energy allocation rules based on job profiling data analysis. And the second point is the, uh, so it is important to suggest a recommend power knob setting so for instance, uh, for memory band intensive type job, uh, we recommend number of uh, FPU should be one. For uh, instruction intensive type job, uh, we recommend memory bandwidth should be half, like that. Okay, so 
let me uh, discuss about the pre-post IO. Uh, pre-post IO is one of the important point for efficient usage as well. So e, uh, in K-computer case, we adopt this kind of asynchronous pre-post IO. Uh, and its time was not counted by user time. Okay, like this. So in this method, uh, pre-post IO can be overlapped with job executions like this and like this. And it is uh, expected to increase job feeding rate. So in some sense, uh, this method was one of the most advanced or challenging method for pre-post IO. But <clears throat> actually this type pre-post IO was much more difficult to implement and it's, uh, complexity might induce many serious system failures. So, and so as pre-post IO time is not counted as user time, so many users did not need to optimize their IO load. So we adopt a synchronous time uh, pre-post IO like this, uh, for, uh, which means the no overlapping and uh, pre-post IO uh, time will be counted as user time. So <clears throat> we believe that the, this policy will contribute to realize efficient usage for whole product operation. And it will be benefit for not only operation side, but also user side. Okay, so this is last slide. We would like to change resource compensation policy as well to achieve its efficient uh, usage. In the computer case, we compensate node, our, uh, node hours lost by system failure. So on the other hand, in Fuga cooperation, we do not it, except for operation errors, because we have to accept certain system failures for extremely large HPC system like Fugaku. So, and this kind of policies uh, is popular in HPC center around the world. So we strongly recommend to use checkpoint restart uh, support tool like uh, Beroch. And the, we have already confirmed basic function of Beroch works well on Fugaku. So it will contribute to raise uh, for tolerance of your workload and to reduce of our turn around time. Okay, so this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention.